Remember when the world was innocent before the internet? A watercolor titled Exchanging Fluids by Brian Swords of York. The dimensions are 24 inches wide by 19 inches high. <laughs> Let's go back. Tamagotchi, the of Y2K. That's right, it's time again for another channel surfing video because I've come across some obscure nostalgia clips that I wanted to share and talk about. This is a momentous occasion because it's the very first channel surfing video that isn't holiday themed. Plus, if you watch the Christmas channel surfing video, I promise that there isn't any rapping clips in this video. Just kidding, there's one. Without further ado, let's surf. Just what the doctor ordered. Just give me a Dr. Pepper. To be or not to be. That is the question. This is ARF, a variety show for dogs by dogs that was released as a home video back in 1985. Sometimes watching clips on this channel can be a slog, but ARF was an absolute delight to watch. The video opens from the point of view of a dog running down the stairs as his family leaves the house for the day. He lays down in the living room and turns on the TV to this. The first show on WDOG-TV is a game show called Boners. Alright, I know you expect me to make a joke about the name, but that sort of dirty humor is above this channel. You all need to get your heads out of the gutter. Anyway, this game show is hosted by Law Barker. I figured with a show named Boners it would be hosted by a wiener dog. Damn it, Michael. You're better than that. So the aforementioned game show is sort of like Hollywood Squares where a celebrity dog panel try to sniff out the correct answers. All the dogs are such good boys and girls because they all get the questions correct. Mitzi here wins and gets a year's supply of dog treats, a diamond studded leather collar, and a designer hydrant. <coughs> Fitness with Fifi is next and she helps dogs stay in shape. She tells them about the essential workout techniques like running, jumping, moving your tail, rolling over, and licking your chops to firm up that jawline. During the political show hosted by Johnny Barkson, my dog Trapper began to take notice. He seemed to really enjoy the views from guest Dr. Rudolf Schwarzpeel. He discusses the great frisbee controversy that's sweeping the nation. Turns out many dogs are not fans of catching frisbees because it's not only degrading, but the bacteria from the plastic gives them tummy aches. <laughs> so cute. The host of the show doesn't seem to be too amused though because he falls asleep at his desk. Another one of my dog's favorite segments was Bark Along with Mitch, and then there's a cooking show hosted by Julia Chow with recipes featuring ingredients such as chewed slippers, stale dog biscuits, and bones. Marlin Perkinies and the Mild Kingdom shows the best places to take your master for a walk, and throughout we get commercials like this one for Fluffy Luster Shampoo that will have all the boys barking at you. Is it still considered catcalling if a dog's doing it? There's also this adorable commercial of a couple snuggled up in bed together discussing the age-old problem of dog breath. The video comes to a close with WDOG Newshound Update with Duke Tuff. Here's what's going on in dog news. The president has announced National Dog Day. The son of famed movie director Sir Alfred Lickchops will be making Psycho 3. A new elf has been added to Santa's team. There's a new dance craze sweeping the nation called the Paw and Twirl. There was a national bird watching competition. Miss Indiana was announced as the Miss Canine America winner. And war wages on with exclusive footage of these dogs attempting to escape a prisoner of war camp. With this one making quite the daring escape. Oh, what a good boy. Seduce and Destroy will teach you the techniques to have any hard body blonde just dripping to wet your dock. Welcome once again to the program, ladies and gentlemen. And in the This guy looks like if Rod Stewart and Brian Wilson had a baby. They felt this cross, and I try to say in the beginning that this is not a theatrical thing. Oh boy, here we go. At least let I thought you said this wouldn't be theatrical. Yeah, John, get that mic in closer. We need to hear what the demon has to say. <laughs> Tell me you ate Taco Bell earlier without telling me you ate Taco Bell earlier. Am I right? Give me your name. Oh, okay. My name is... Are you going I'm sorry, I missed that. Is that with six or seven O's? All joking aside, though, the best part of this entire clip is the demon leaves her body like a little hiccup. Come out of her. But after that, she forgets that the demon supposedly has left her body and she does the act again by mistake. 
My commands are... 33 This is a central Pennsylvania arts and crafts show called Gallery 33, where you can buy art from local artists. The show opens with the host standing in front of a group of people waiting by the phones for bidders. Let's see what kind of art they have for sale today. The next item, number 71. It is a watercolor titled Surfacing by Brian Swords of York. Oh, that's pretty cute. It's like two rats recreating the training scene from Dirty Dancing. Brian has sent us another piece that we know is going to sell like hotcakes. <laughs> hmm. Um, okay. Well, I'm sure these pieces are telling a story. Let's see the next one. Item 734 next, a watercolor titled The Smell of Wet Fur by Brian Swords of York. Oh, uh, let's see how the host describes these pieces. Maybe they have more insight. Uh, drawings and paintings of um, rats in unusual circumstances. And yeah, that's one way to put it. The high bid is $77 from an anonymous bidder. Uh, this just in, we've located the anonymous bidder. He's been up on the roof ever since he saw your report. Really? Doing what? Coming. <gasps> Item number 735 is uh, watercolor Stay Up Late by Brian Swords of York. It's 24 by 18 inches. Okay, they're just straight up selling furry porn at this point. What's that in the background? It's KY Jelly! You know, it's that kind of attention to detail that separates this piece from all the rest. I love the way the host tiptoe around the subject matter by saying this piece needs no explanation. I beg to differ. Out of all the art being sold on the show, these need the most explaining. Now here comes the last piece, and I swear you can't make this up. What's the item number? Item number 69. A watercolor titled Exchanging Fluids by Brian Swords of York. Damn, these rats have a better love life than I do. <laughs> and anyhow, it also is self-explanatory. Sure, it may be self-explanatory, but I want to hear you explain it. Now tell me nice and slow. I wonder if it just keeps getting more graphic every time this artist sent in one of his pieces. Where did they draw the line? I need to know! <laughs> this is a training video for Wendy's employees to learn how to correctly cook burgers on their grills. It opens with founder Dave Thomas talking about the fresh beef and we even get a glimpse into my childhood. Remember when Wendy's had salad bars? That's back when the fries and drinks came in yellow containers. The real fun begins when Bill here clocks in and goes to see Mary, who informs him he's going to be learning how to work the grill today. The way she explains it's very professional. Bun warmer up above keeps the buns warm and fresh. Remember, we serve 100% pure ground beef. Just a totally normal human interaction between a manager and her employee. Bill pops in a grill training video and we're taken to a Wendy's Wonderland. And if you think this guy's about to rap, then you know my channel very well. Now working the grill, Bill, it ain't so tough. But first of all, you got to check your stuff. Like a grill that set at 250 with the meat and cheese that's ready to go. A towel to keep your station looking cool. But most of all, you got to have your tool. I never leave my house without my tool. Just when you thought it couldn't get any wilder, these three burgers start singing as they're burnt alive. We start shrinking when we hit that grill, you know it will. I have the same issue whenever it gets cold outside or if I go for a swim. Okay, what's next? Let me see. I've salted, turned, pressed. You gotta flip that shit when you see red juice, Bill. God damn. By the way, I love the way this guy says juicy. Don't scrape the grill, we want it wet, you see? It keeps the meat moist so it's hot and juicy and juicy. I've never been as excited about something as this guy is about his meat being juicy. And juicy. I feel like back in the late 80s and early 90s, every white person in television and film had a magical black man to guide them through life. If the dry burn broken or incomplete, that baby turns into chili and meat. Remind me to skip the chili next time I eat at Wendy's. Near the end, the burger patties start to get seductive. Stage one, I'm raw, you just laid me down. I'm stage two and I'm getting brown. You turn me and press me just one time, but there's two more stages before I'm fine. Is he gonna fuck those patties? Bill? Bill? Bill, the tape is over. Do you have any questions? This is the most realistic part of working at a fast food restaurant. That one employee who's high as shit. The training video comes to a close with a country rock music video featuring different employees who work at Wendy's. I won't get burned in the rush Because I don't give up 
when you're feeling the heat I got just what you need It's always good to perfection I've got grill skill It takes nerves and steam If you've never had a reading from a real psychic It's the season of giving Who and his friends are making This is The Groovians, an animated pilot for a show on Adult Swim that aired November 10th, 2002. This seems to be the only episode in existence because it was not picked up by Adult Swim after it aired. The voice cast include Pee Wee Herman himself, Paul Rubens, Dennis Hopper, RuPaul, and Robert De Niro's daughter, Drina. Unfortunately, after watching it, I can understand why they weren't offered to make more. The Groovians isn't bad. It's fun, weird animation, but in terms of story, it's rushed and lacks any purpose. Now that I've really hyped you up for this show, let's take a look back at the pilot episode of The Groovians. The show centers around Jet and Glindy, a young alien couple who feel out of place in the bland world they live in. Even the neighbors are pissed off because they're so creative. When are you gonna learn that you can't have your cake and eat it too, huh? I never understood that phrase. Am I supposed to go to a party, get a slice of cake, and then just not eat it? What are you implying? Just as they're discussing their artistic potential, a spaceship tosses the neighbor kid on the front lawn with his guitar. He explains to Jet and Glindy that he found a place where you can be anything you want to be, called Groovania. He expresses this by playing his guitar while the other two dance. As his grandma comes out and drags him back into the house, he tosses Jet and Glindy a key so they can travel to Groovania. Just as they're about to leave on the adventure of a lifetime, Jet's parents tell them they need to face the responsibilities of life. In game show fashion, the two find out their futures if they stay on this planet. Glindy will become a filing clerk and Jet will marry Glindy's sister. This is really weird because his parents seemingly don't want Jet to marry Glindy, but instead marry her sister? Like, what? Fast forward to the wedding and we see Glindy's sister's got herself a dump truck. Glindy saves Jet from the wedding and the two take off to Groovania with their dog. By the way, their dog has a bunch of eyes and speaks in different animal sounds. Look, 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 look. The ship they're on is very groovy, and even RuPaul makes an appearance. Say hey! Say ho! Say hey! When they arrive at Groovania, they meet this horny tree who speaks in rhymes. When she finds out they have a key, she does this. Oh my, oh me! I see you have a key! Just slide the key inside my slot. A pretty key can tell a lot. That's what they all say, and then bada boom, bada bing, herpes. When they arrive at their new apartment, we meet their three new roommates. Two girls and a guy who looks kind of like handsome Squidward. He's also very into himself. I love you. You're every squabble in the world to me. He won't let them in until he sees how hot Glindy is. I love the animated walk he does here, by the way. It's my favorite part of the whole episode. It reminds me of the emo kid from the Rap City Kids. Before they can get acquainted, the clock says it's party time and they all begin to boogie with transitions you might find from that 70s show. But uh-oh, look who shows up. The Normals. They're robots and all they care about is money and paying taxes. Their leader's King Norman and he does a song about hating creativity and his love of money. Kind of a weird thing to do. You hate creativity so much that you do a Broadway-style musical number. Glindy beats them all up using paint. The Normals leave and it ends with them having some cake. See? You can have your cake and eat it too. Nice callback. Well there you have it, another channel surfing video in the books with less rapping and more furry porn. Just how you demanded it. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe. For every person who likes this video, may your love life blossom like two rats. Bye everyone. Did you see?